The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Mogwitsi Eric Kibitswi Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana. I request the protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Mogwitsi Eric Kibiswi Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency. Mr. President, I join previous speakers in extending my sincere congratulations to you on your election as the President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. You can count on my delegation's full support as you steer the work of this august body. Mr. President, I could not agree more with you that the multilateral system needs to rebuild trust and reignite global solidarity to accelerate action on the Agenda 2030 and its Sustainable Development Goals in order to realize peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability. As we convene this week, the world is in the age of polycrisis facing a plethora of persisting global challenges, among them the war in Ukraine and its associated geopolitical tensions and impact on the global economy, the challenges relating to climate change and the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Of critical importance is the distressing reality that the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals is off track. From the 2023 SDG progress report, half of the targets of the SDGs are experiencing inadequate progress, while 30% of the targets have come to a halt. This lack of progress is exacerbated by the multifaceted global crisis, which compounds the already dire situation we find ourselves in. Illustratively, whereas SDG 5, which expresses the need for gender equality and empowerment of women and girls, and picks representation in positions of power and leadership as one of the indicators, the United Nations in this regard has not done badly, except for the Secretary General position. Would you not agree with me that the time is now to have a female Secretary General? The gravity of challenges the gravity of challenges faced by the SDGs demands that we transcend the business-as-usual approach to addressing these. This will obligate a robust political commitment from all of us. It is therefore imperative for the United Nations system, international financiers, the private sector and civil society to forge a collective front and refocus our efforts to swiftly propel the SDGs back on track. To this end, the recent SDG summit and its political declaration could not have come at a better time. Mr. President, over the past few years, we have witnessed and continue to endure the profound and devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The consequences have been felt across nations, but the extent of its devastation have varied greatly depending on factors such as level of development and geographical location. Whether one resides in the global south or north, a landlocked developing country or a small island developing state, these distinctions have played a crucial role in determining the severity of the pandemic's effects. It is therefore imperative that we will wholeheartedly embrace the ongoing discussions regarding pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response. Mr. President, Botswana's key priority in these discussions is to ensure an international instrument that addresses equity during a pandemic. To this end, the main issues to be addressed from this perspective include timely and equitable access and sharing of benefits, strengthening of regulations to ensure developed countries and those with resources do not hoard medical products during a pandemic, building capacity for stronger health systems, investment in research and development to build local and regional manufacturing vaccines, including sharing of intellectual property, and establishing sustainable, predictable, and flexible 
financing mechanisms. I am pleased to inform the General Assembly that Botswana is making her contribution to build capacity to manufacture vaccines for both humans and animals. We have made remarkable progress in terms of HIV diagnosis, and on the 28th of August, 2023, our National HIV Reference Laboratory was designated a World Health Organization Collaborating Center of Excellence. This epitomized, in part, the crowning of our national laboratory competence and success in carrying out genomic sequencing on level, levels equivalent to those of the best, as demonstrated by being the first to discover the Omicron variant. By the time these discussions reach their conclusion, it is essential that we establish robust systems that leave no room for the repetition of such calamity, ensuring that the survival and well-being of our people are never again contingent upon their location in the global south or north. More importantly, our hope is that the resultant of these discussions will culminate into a treaty. Mr. President, climate change remains an urgent and critical challenge of our time with a huge threat to the existence of our planet. It is alarming that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change recently reported, reported record high global greenhouse emissions, which are at the highest level and continues to surge. To effectively address climate change, it is crucial that we prioritize international cooperation and partnerships. This global effort requires a comprehensive approach that goes beyond reducing emissions, encompassing various aspects of our lives, be it energy, production, agriculture, transportation, and industry. Our efforts must also include accelerating uh, the uptake of renewable energy sources and investing in clean technologies. This necessitates sufficient funding to support mitigation and adaptation, particularly for developing countries. In this context, we endorse the appeal for developed countries to fulfill their pledge of providing 100 billion US dollars annually in climate finance to developing countries. This also includes fully replenishing the Green Climate Fund. My government welcomes the Secretary General's acceleration agenda, which urges the fast tracking of climate action in all countries and sectors. It is imperative that both developed and developing countries comply with their targets. As for Botswana, we reaffirm our commitment to achieving a 15% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. Mr. President, it has been more than a year since the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war. The war's destructive consequences have been experienced not only in the region, but also globally, as the international economy has suffered from food and energy crisis. Botswana strongly urges an immediate cessation of hostilities and advocates for a diplomatic resolution to the conflict. In this regard, Botswana welcomes the recent engagement between African and Russian Ukraine leaders, and we hope that these efforts, along with similar initiatives elsewhere, will encourage the conflicting parties to return to the negotiating table. While we work on resolving active conflicts, we must step up action in mitigating all threats to international peace and security by reaffirming and observing the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, international law, and other obligations. This also includes commitment to obligations concerning, among others, nuclear disarmament and nuclear non-proliferation, arms control, weapons of mass destruction. Mr. President, Botswana shares a deep concern regarding the persistent conflicts and destabilization of legitimate governments across the African continent. The negation of constitutionalism as evidenced by overthrows of governments which seem to be having a contagion effect should be shunned with the greatest disdain. Equally, the deprivation of people to self-determine continues unabated albeit repugnant. It is of utmost importance that the United Nations Secretary General collaborates closely with the African Union and sub-regional organizations to prioritize and actively engage to foster peace and stability in Africa. I firmly believe that the attainment of lasting peace in Africa can pave way for a more prosperous 
and harmonious continent where the aspirations and well-being of African people can thrive. Mr. President, next year marks the conclusion of the Vienna Pro Program of Action for the Landlocked Developing Countries, LLDCs, followed by the third Landlocked Developing Countries Conference in Kigali, Rwanda, scheduled for June 2024. The challenges faced by the LLDCs have been extensively documented, and the ongoing global crisis have inflicted severe damage to their economies. Unfortunately, the progress achieved in implementing the Vienna Program of Action has been eroded by these crises, resulting in persistently high poverty levels in LLDCs that average 23% as of 2022. These countries continue to suffer from marginalization in global trade due to exorbitant trade costs, underscoring the urgent need for infrastructure development and maintenance to address geographical and structural obstacles and capitalize on their untapped potential. The forthcoming program represents a valuable opportunity to rally greater global support and foster multi-stakeholder partnerships. Consequently, we must prioritize the formulation of new and tangible priorities aimed at blustering infrastructure in LLDCs with particular emphasis on transit, transportation, ICT, and energy sectors. I therefore urge the United Nations Secretary General, development partners, international financial institutions, and the private sector and civil society to unite in support of the upcoming conference. It is essential that we not only strive for its success, but also forge a new program of action that is attuned to the pressing challenges confronting the LLDCs. This comprehensive program must provide the necessary tools and resources to enable these countries to attain their SDGs objectives. To conclude, Mr. President, I want to re-emphasize that merely acknowledging global problems without taking substantive measures will not solve them. We require greater action, the urgent action to revitalize the UN system, ensuring that it is fit for purpose, is now. I thank you for your attention. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Botswana for the statement just made and the request protocol to escort His Excellency.